Happy November Shoreline. Here is your monthly real estate market update. In the month of October, we saw a huge uptick in interest rates. We had the Trump and Harris election on the horizon, and we had the darkening seasonal impact of uh, fall coming upon us here in the, the Pacific Northwest. So overall, this had a little bit of a cooling impact on the real estate market. But the good news is we are in the Seattle area and nothing stays down too long, too bad. So I want to just go into the MLS here and show you what we are looking at in terms of actual uh, property data. And as you can see, here's my little key on the left. The shoreline market is bluish gray. The Seattle market is green and the King County market is red. So this kind of gives you the small niche of our little neighborhood, as well as the larger context. Typically, the smaller the neighborhood may be the more exact we can get, but also we don't have as much data. We don't have as many homes to kind of average things out. So if something was particularly crazy, um, that might show up. And as you can see, the shoreline data here is pretty bumpy, um, pretty up and down. And so um, in terms of number of sales that that shoreline data represents, it's only like 53, 39, 51. And this is all houses uh, that were previously owned. So we're excluding condos, we're excluding new construction. And what I'd like to do is as we look at the sales prices and all of this, instead of going, it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down, let's smooth out this data and just look at it over a rolling three month period. This will give us a little bit smoother look at what's happening big picture. So we're not getting so uh, myopic in our vision that we're just looking at, at something that's minute and doesn't make a lot of sense. So here, what we can see is over the past uh, 12 months, over the year, the shoreline market is up about 4%. So this is not crazy double digit increases like we might've seen in the past, but it's still good news that shoreline is doing relatively well. And the median home price here is 865,000. And again, now we know that this is smoothed data, but you can see things have been pretty flat for the year. As usual, you know, it's kind of slower in the winter. It shoots up in the spring and then it was just pretty flat. We're looking at smooth data, a little dip in the summer as expected, and then flattening out again. Uh, in Seattle, much the same, pretty flat, kind of a, a overall downward trend. And same with King County, a little bit of an overall downward trend. Not surprising after spring that we have that overall downward trend. If we look at where we were at this time last year, November last year, you know, our median home price was 822 and now it's 865. So we're up that 4%, $40,000, not too shabby. Um, good job living in your house, making money while you sleep, right? That's appreciation. That's a powerful wealth builder. And that's why we love owning homes in the Pacific Northwest because it makes us a lot of money. Now let's look at some of the other elements of the market that you might find interesting or relevant, especially if you're thinking about buying a home, selling a home, getting into an investment property. I have clients right now looking for duplexes. I have clients selling duplexes and rental property. So if you're in that market, I have actually 20 years of experience as a real estate investor. I'd be happy to walk you through those numbers and what some of that looks like uh, more specifically to that market. Now this is showing new listings. I've unsmoothed the data so we can get a real accurate look. But basically this is showing when do we have the most people bringing their house to market to sell. And for the last couple of years, the peak for that has been in May. And so uh, that's when, if you're thinking about selling in the spring, you can bring your home on in May. Uh, you'll have a lot of other homes competing with you at that point, I might suggest thinking about a March or an April listing date, if you had to choose and just stick a pin in it, you won't have quite as many other homes to compete with in the marketplace. And once you hit the end of June, the buyer activity really tends to die off. So if it doesn't hit and sell right away at the, when you first launch, uh, you're kind of on a downward trajectory for your momentum. Right now in the autumn, you can see uh, overall fewer homes are being listed. As far as pending sales, these are properties that have been locked up with a contract. We have had an increase over the fall. Typically, 
July and August are pretty slow, and then it bumps up September and October. People are back at work. They're making things happen again, and then we'll see this die down again. This is data for September and October. We saw a rise here, and um, you can see in Seattle, it's starting to wane a little bit already, so that typically softens going into winter. Now here we're looking at average days on market, and it's certainly true that if we look at the median days on market, uh, we can see that it's still about a week, meaning about half or more of the homes are selling within seven or eight days. However, average home prices are going up. And what this reflects is that not every home sells within a week. Sometimes people overprice the property. It's not well presented. Uh, maybe it's not a desirable property type. Uh, for whatever reason, it's not selling in that first week. And in that case, homes can tend to linger on the market for longer. And that becomes longer and longer as fewer buyers are out there looking. So what might have had 20 people come through in a month in September is only going to have 10 people come through in October or November. So if you need to get a certain number of people through to find that buyer, uh, then it's going to take longer. The rate of showings is slower. And how many people does it take to have come through and find a buyer? This is our median number of showings until the property goes pending. And in Shoreline, that's 15, meaning we have to have 15 people through your house to likely get one offer. If we've had 30 people through your house with no offers, it means they're not liking what they see when they get there. So now that the election season is behind us, well, let me preface this by saying typically sales go down in November. Uh, in an election year, they tend to go down even more during that time of year. And now that the uh, election is behind us, we would anticipate that all of those people that didn't buy because they felt uncertain are now, they know what's going to be happening moving forward. So they're going back into house buying mode. They feel more certainty and more confidence moving forward. So typically there's a bounce back effect after a slowdown due to an election year. And so here, what we're looking at is some data regarding the forecasted number of home sales. So here is 2024. And we can see that pre COVID we were on track with about 6 million sales per year that really boosted up. When they dropped the interest rates to so low, we got up to almost 7 million per year. And then what did they do in response? They cranked the interest rates up really high in the middle of 2022. And you can see that sharp decline in the number of home sales. Not only are we fighting higher interest rates, but we have the contrast of home sellers who locked in a low interest rate and they're sitting in their beautiful home with a 3% mortgage it's going to be expensive for them to buy something, even you know, going from one million dollar home to another one million dollar home. Uh, it's going to be quite expensive because they're releasing that low interest rate mortgage going into a higher interest rate mortgage. So we've seen a depression in turnover due to that low in uh, low level of transition, that kind of golden handcuffs, that locked in effect. But as time goes by, that becomes less important. People got to move, they got to have a baby, they got to get married, they got to change jobs. There are reasons that people sell their house, and those will become more important and more pressing the further away we get from that. I just refinanced into the low rate. Um, secondarily, we have seen some decline in the interest rates this year that just got largely erased in the month of October, but projections are that we should continue to see home price, I'm sorry, inflation rates go down into 2025 into the 5% range, maybe five and a half, as seems to be the average of what people are forecasting. But um, note here on this slide that we're currently on pace for about 4.7 million uh, transactions this year, same as last year. This is nationwide data. And moving into 2025, these are the projections from Fannie Mae, Mortgage Brokers Association, and the National Association of Realtors which are projecting an increase of home sales uh, going back up above 5 million, maybe 5.5 million, something like that. So hopefully if you've been out there looking and felt like you were struggling because there was a lack of inventory or um, maybe you didn't know if you should sell your home, now I feel like that's getting unlocked 
if you do sell, you'll be able to find something else to buy, et cetera. So this is a good sign for kind of easing in the marketplace, a little bit more fluidity and balance of uh, transaction levels. But looking at this survey here, uh, about half of home owners would be motivated to buy if rates came back down under 6%. So uh, that's kind of what we're projecting. They have other answers here, looking at less than 5%, 4%, and 3%. But of course, we are not projecting interest rates to go that low in the near future. What can we expect here in Shoreline? Overall, it should be a little bit calmer year in the real estate market in 2025. Lower interest rates should bring out more buyers. It should also bring out more sellers. And with more homes on the market to feed those buyers, we shouldn't see as many frenzied, you know, bidding up multiple offer scenarios um, unless they're done by design, maybe pricing homes a little low so you can get multiple offers, get it sold and just be done with it. That's definitely a strategic option. And we definitely tend to be in a seller's market almost perpetually where things do sell pretty quickly, but you can't overprice, you can't underprepare your home. You need to still be strategic about what you're doing when you're selling. If you wanna maximize not just your sales price, but your profits that you're gonna be walking away from the table with. So that's an important thing to remember. If you're buying a home, you should have a, a relatively little competition over the next couple of months. So if you're looking for a fixer upper, if you're looking to make a deal, maybe negotiate down on price, have people cover your closing costs, reduce your out-of-pocket expenditures. This is a window in which you can take advantage of a little bit more negotiating power as a buyer. But remember, that you might not have as many homes to choose from. So if you don't like what you're seeing, don't get discouraged. Just wait till spring and kind of reset at that point. So thanks so much for watching. I'm Emily Cressy. I'm a local real estate agent with Keller Williams, Greater Seattle. And I love working here in the Shoreline area. If you have questions about buying and selling, feel free to reach out to me. And until then, I'll see you on the next video. If you're here in Seattle and you're looking for tips on buying, selling, or investing in real estate, or you just want to stay updated on the latest market trends, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. We regularly post market updates, neighborhood tours, and buyer and seller tips so you can stay educated when it comes to the Seattle lifestyle and your buying and selling options here. And if you're ready to take the next step in your real estate journey, visit me online at homeproassociates.com or text me the word home to my cell phone, 206-245-8813. I'm here to help you find the perfect property or sell your home quickly and easily. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Until then, I'll see you on the next video.